how do you catch an addiction? Restoring hope. Open my heart to sing. Taking the darkness inside. Revealing your light. Restoring hope. Open my eyes to Four minutes after the hour, we welcome you to this version of Restoring Hope at RestoringHopeLive.com, live at WebcastOneLive.com. We appreciate you being here. I know. I know in your busy life. I know on spring break. I know. I watch Oprah. I've got 634 channels on my TV. I've got satellite radio. I know there's 100 places you could be going. Either you decided to come here, and for that I'm thankful, or God led you here today. And for that, I feel blessed. Our goal is always his words through me and that some nugget of wisdom, something will be said by one of us today, unaware we're saying anything that means anything to you, but it'll touch your heart and it'll give you an answer or it'll help you follow a road or maybe it'll end up bind and breaking a relationship that you know should have been gone a long time ago. Restoring hope is about habits, hurts and hangups. And I'm surrounded with professional people. First of all, my co-host, uh, Dr. Mike Hartwig. Is this the first time you've been on the Monday show? I think it is, yeah. Congratulations. It's glad to be here. Thank you. It's wonderful to you be bet. here. You bet. Nice yeah. to have you here. And, yeah. of course, our a man of the hour, Joe Mines, which I know the, those of you folks that are listening on the radio can't tell, but Joe always dresses like a million bucks. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> well, you do. You well. always have a beautiful suit and tie and coat on and... You know, here's the thing, Mac. I've, I've learned that it's important to always re represent my wife well wherever I go. <laughs> so this, this is, it's about her. It is me. about her? That's right. Well, I hope I don't know if you're being sarcastic, but I can relate to that. I, my face and hair <laughs> are the way my wife likes it. Because she yeah. has to look yeah, at me. That's right. She has to wake up next to me. I don't care. She also said, do you have a face for radio? She did so, say yeah, that. Yeah, I know yeah, that. Right, yeah. Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat watching the chat. And uh, if you log on to um, webcastonelive.com, soon you'll be able to log on to restoringhopelive.com. But if you log on to webcast, W-E-B-C-A-S-T, the word one, O-N-E, live, there is a live chat there. And it is a culture of its own. It's our own little online society that chats back and forth. And Bob's the one that monitors that. So any questions you want to uh, put into the conversation, but you don't want to pick up the phone and call, uh, or you don't want to email or Facebook, you're always welcome to jump online and put that in there. And you can sign up anonymously, but if you're a jerk, we'll kick you off. I mean, zero tolerance on people messing with our chat. We're talking about people's lives, their relationships, Sometimes the existence of them beyond 30 days or 60 days until they get help. So don't, don't think I'm rude on this, but if you're here to mess around, go play somebody else's backyard because we're saving lives in the name of Christ here. All right, so here's the topic for today. How do you catch an addiction? And if you call in and say with a large net, you're wrong. How do you catch an addiction? And then obviously the other half of the conversation is how do you get rid of it? Now, this is running on the assumption that alcoholism is not a disease. Well, that's the assumption that I'm going to run off of. Yeah, no, but that's what I mean. Yeah. Uh, one of the nice things about having Joe here is I come from the 12-step world. And so in my world, the majority of people believe that alcoholism is a disease, that you are born with some gene and something along the way triggers it. Uh, most alcoholics who believe it's a disease will tell you the moment they first tasted alcohol, whether they were 10, 12, 21, the moment they first tasted it, their life was changed. And that would be the disease, correct? Well, we can talk about that today. Okay. Um, one 244 7 is the number to call uh, if you'd like to chime in today. So how do you catch an addiction? Uh, through life. And that's really why I like this topic, because it's, it's such a big topic, because there's a lot of people, especially the more that we've been dealing with prescription drug addiction and addictions that don't always necessarily arise from, you know, being a bar fly or hanging out on a street corner scoring dope. You know, this is something that you got from your doctor. It's something that was used for a purpose and a real purpose. And, you know, a lot of people, when they think about addictions, it's, it's something that, you know, just happens to them. 
And there's a process behind right. dependency to substances. And that's really the big issue. And that, that's very, uh, the reason why it's a big issue is because you need to pay special attention to that when you formulate, okay, what are we going to do about it? So wait, I want to get back here. So what you're saying is, is it's not a, an addiction. I mean, it's not a disease. That's, that's right. That, and it's something that we have to get involved with and make a choice to go ahead and down that. Right. Down that path. Right. Yeah, and I mean, I, that flies in the face of a lot of stuff that's out there. Sure well, does. I also don't disagree with that. Remember that I was surrounded by alcohol as yeah, I grew up. Yeah, but you're a 12-stepper. Right. But, but remember this, though. Remember something. I was surrounded by alcohol growing up. My uncles, my aunts, my grandmother. I mean, we right, were right. an alcohol-drinking family. Right. I worked in bars all of my life, and yet I was called a teetotaler. I might have one gin and tonic, maybe, and I very rarely finished it. And then in 94, something dramatic happened to me, and I turned to alcohol. So am I and an alcoholic you, by disease? Most people would tell you I'm not. Well, they would probably say that you had latent tendencies, and then all of a sudden it came alive. Yeah. I'm not arguing that point. No, no, we're not either. Yeah, but that's but, one of the reasons I like Joe around, because right. he reminds me that I may be more responsible for my alcoholism S so, then, well, so what do you say? What do you two guys say to people that say, "No, no, it is a disease," it, and you can't tell me anything different? You know, what do you say to those people? I, I mean, it, that my answer is it's not essential about how you got it. What's Ooh. essential is how to get rid of it. Ooh, which is your point? That's exactly yeah. correct. Yeah, um, you know, that's that's exactly correct. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the baptism question. <laughs> you know, dunking or or, or sprinkling. sprinkling. Yeah, 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 it doesn't right. matter. Right. Yeah. Oh, at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Yep. What we're looking at, and the reason why it's an issue at all for us, is because it does affect what do we do about it. You know, if it's a disease, then we'll probably just go the pharmacological route and we'll try to correct whatever imbalances with medications and uh, we'll put in preventive measures to keep you from abiding by your disease. If it's not a disease, that means it's about something else. And that then is really what we're looking at. We're going to take a, a bigger look at your life uh, as opposed to just a substance addiction and really drill down into what's working, what's not working, what's really going on here that's driving this. And that's a big issue for us because if we just stop at, well, it's just a disease, then we can stop there when it comes to how right. are we going to confront it in a treatment setting. So it's, it's really important for us to understand from the outset that, no, there, there's more to this. And that's really what we're getting after. So I recorded on TV. <coughs> one of, Excuse me. One of the shows it was uh, My Weird Addictions. I don't know if you've yeah. seen it. Yeah, yeah, right. Like a uh, uh, lady online that's eating cat hair. Yeah. Uh, she can't stop. Yeah. They interviewed her psychiatrist. Uh, what's going on there? It's a behavior disorder. And that's, that's the issue. And, and a lot of parents will call into our, our recovery center. Right, and, right. They'll, uh, they'll say, well, what about this? Is this an addiction? Right. Well, yeah, it may not be the same kind as like right. a crack addiction, but that's the whole point. It's, it's a behavior pattern. It's, it's something that you've implemented into your life and your reality that helps you manifest a perception that's more optimal for yourself. All right. Now, I'm, I'm surrounded by a bunch of good Christian men here. So if I say something that's blasphemous, tell me. All right. Chris Roloff, are you listening? By the way, this is not the opinion of Dr. Mike Hartwig, Joe Mainz, or anybody else here at Webcast One Live or KTIA. Jesus can become an addiction, right? Badly. Well, I, the question I'm flashing through my mind when you were just talking there is well, how do you define addiction? Well, something. Well, go ahead. Yeah, we're, we're really looking at this in the, uh, from the premise of something that you've Im imported into your life that is causing negative effects on your life. And the most important thing that we really view addiction as, addiction is nothing more to us than a barrier that's standing in the way from somebody being able to become who God right. created them to be. Okay, that's so the there's an element of pain, is what I hear you saying. Absolutely. This is that I could, I could be addicted to love, mm -hmm. and that's okay. No. In, until it goes too far. But really in the classic definition of de addiction is you're saying it's no. You should not be addicted to anything. Right, 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 right. I, I, I mean, do have an addic I do have a definition here. I looked it up. Well, wait, right. dictionary.com. Well, what about? Oh, hey, you can always trust what's on the internet for addiction. <laughs> <laughs> the state of being enslaved to a habit or practice or to something that is psych uh, psychologically or physically habit forming as narcotics to such an extent that its cessation causes severe trauma. I, you, you, you could have stopped after the word slave. But note he added the last part there, that it's a negative thing, right? There's a negative thing. In other words, am I addicted to food? 
No, no. Well, I got to have food to live. You yeah, sure but do. you're not addicted to it. You, I, you, I oh, well, know, how would you define it? I, I know men who are addicted to food. Okay, breathing. <laughs> Am but, I addicted? You see what I'm trying to get at? No, that's Some not, people that's will something say, you do natural. That's like saying you're addicted to waking up in well, the morning. So is, so is sex. Are you, are you a slave to it? Uh, well, Does it you, control you? Yes. Does it hurt other relationships in your life? There's that. That is a crucial part of the Do you put it at a addiction. higher priority than okay. your family and your okay. work and your okay. God? You're right. Okay. So there is an element of negativity with addiction. Yeah. There always it's always going to show some some. Yeah. It says okay. obsession, compulsion, psychological. Boy, is being obsessive bad in the case of Jesus Christ? Yeah, I, I think so. Can you be obsessive about Jesus? Christ? Absolutely. <sighs> Absolutely. I think if there's anything in life I want to be obsessed about, that's that. I don't think Jesus wanted us to be obsessive. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't say, I'm the only thing in the world for you. Get rid of your fellow disciples. Get rid uh, of your fellow brothers. Get rid of your family. Come and he praise did. me. He did. He did say that. No, exactly. He, didn't. <laughs> he did. He said, you can't love me unless you hate your mother and father. If you hate this world. Yeah. He did say that exactly. Okay, well. <laughs> Psychological That's why you're or the physical biblical expert I'm not on something. Hate these Bible Psychological when they come in here and just ruin my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. There, we, I think if there's anything in life we should be obsessed about, it should be about Jesus Christ, because then it puts everything else in order. I, I guess I I guess I'm you're right. Here's what wait, I'm wait, thinking wait, of. Play that again. You're, <laughs> you're right. I just know those people who every answer in the world comes through Jesus. Yeah, well, now that's different. It's how you flesh that out. Okay. It's not biblical. Right. I mean, everything in the world, Jesus told me. I can't do that because Jesus told me. Jesus said this or Jesus right. said that when right. Jesus didn't say it. Right, right. It's not in Scripture anyway. I agree with what you're saying. That's I, what I'm thinking I, I about. think you're right if it, because they don't flesh out being obsessed with Jesus Christ in the proper way. Oh, move your water bottle, would you? Thanks. Thanks. You all right, uh, Joe Mines from St. Gregory's, Dr. Michael Hartwig, and uh, Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat. So have we determined now that addiction is bad? I think so. I think we could establish the parameters for the sake of the show that addiction is talking about something that's in your life that's harming you. All right. Uh, we can use the word obsessive. We can use the word slave to it. What was another word you used? Comp um, obsession. Obsession. Compulsion. All right. That, that open, I mean, that last thing that he, had, that he said is really important, too, because how do we know something is really bad? In other words, there are people that come in and talk to me. They like this. Wife says it's a problem. Guy says it's not a problem. That's an easy one. Anybody that's married knows wife says it's a problem. That makes it a problem. Yeah, and, and that's not yeah, a that's joke. No that's what. true. Well, how do you know it's not a problem with her? Well... Well, that might be, but you're I'm, the marriage counselor. I'm pretty, sure that in, that. I'm pretty sure that in my house, it could it doesn't be. Matter. Yeah, but if, yeah, 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 that's right. It doesn't matter. That's right. Well, but and I'm not making a joke. And ladies, please don't get upset out there. But the greatest thing I ever realized is most of the time my wife's right. Now I'm very happy to be married to a very reasonable woman. So we don't right. have to. Things aren't right. out of balance. If honey, if you're listening that often. But right. sometimes, but we'll talk about that tonight. But, um, yeah, you're right. If the wife says that's a problem, if she's at all a reasonable person, then it's probably a problem. And, and I'm thinking of a case, you know, I can have a beer at night. It's no big deal. Guy goes on, and the wife comes in and says, no, you're addicted to it. You're addicted to it, and it's causing problems. And to him, it's not. Right. So how do we know, and where's the, where's the benchmark there? By the Where's way, the if one beer, okay, now I'm going to have the women mad at me. If your wife says one beer is a problem, either you're really a light drunk or you're not married to a reasonable right. woman. Well, yeah. I think at the end of the day here, there's plenty of rationality exercises that we can look at. That's when right. we can all honestly start taking right. a look at what is the, the irrational belief system. And that's the whole right. point of our treatment methodology right. is, is really understanding if you're in or out of a right relationship some, with something by challenging the rationality that you hold to it. How do you catch an addiction? And once you do, how do you get rid of it? It's much more difficult than the common cold. This is RestoringHopeLive.com. Christ-centered, dealing with your hurts, habits, and hang-ups, right here on WebcastOneLive.com.
from the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. Fight the good fight on a Rebels Cause Radio, Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on a RebelsCause.com. A Rebels Cause Radio is edification. Whether you're 10... 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Twenty-one minutes after the hour, I'm Jay Michael McCoy, and if I haven't told you lately, thanks for listening. I love this job; couldn't do it without you. Right here at webcastonelive.com. If you don't have satellite radio or you're not able to tune into our local affiliate, ninety-nine point three KTIA, we now have an app for that. That's right. Go to your Android store and just look for the app Webcast One Live. It is not on the Apple Store. It takes a little bit longer on the Apple Store, but it was just released today on Android. So on your Google phones or your phones that aren't i Apples, aren't iPhones uh, or i what are the iPads, uh, but they're available on your tablets. Look for WebcastOneLive.com and you can get our program every day right online. Dr. Michael Hartwig in the house today, along with Joe Mites from St. Gregory's, and of course uh, Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat watching the chat, and we're being uh, produced today by King David. We appreciate everybody in, in here. All right, so the question for the day is how do you catch an addiction? And obviously, then how do you get rid of it? And we're talking about like catching a cold, we're not talking about aware of it. We're talking about how do you catch one. And we've all determined that an addiction is what, Bob? Compulsion, obsession, usually something negative. Okay. And is there anything that you cannot have too much of? In other words, is there anything that it would be okay to be addicted to? I mean, let's talk about love. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about our kids or our grandkids. 
Are those all out of bounds? If I say I'm addicted to my grandkids and every single moment I have away from my work I spend with my grandkids, or I'm addicted to Jesus... I, from my perspective, I think it's uh, you got to go back to the definition of addiction, and if it's a compulsive that leads to destructive behavior, let's put that in the thing. And I think there are times when you ought to be willing to be destructive of yourself. Sure, but those are very limited in those those types and cases, very extremely. Okay, um, but generally speaking, on the whole, I think addictions are bad, and uh, yeah, you can put your grandkids above life and be destructive about right. about it be destructive well, i've seen design. grandfathers put oh, yeah. uh, uh their uh, kid their grandkids above their own kids or uh, here's a and good, that's not good for yeah, a parent no, son parent good. father no the optive idea here though is if it's destructive i mean that's right. that's where the problem comes i in. think destructive has to be a key word key in the discussion here are i you have okay a merriam webster definition too if you want the, i can get yeah, a lot of different yeah, yeah. ones yeah. joe are you okay with addiction and destructiveness is is their cousins they absolutely. live together absolutely you okay. know i mean I, th- I, th- I just think it really comes down to is the is what we're talking about in right relationship with you or not and that's the big issue okay I, i'm hearing a voice in the back of my head Oh, come on, guys. I'm a guy. I do really well at work. My wife doesn't mind that I drink too much. Uh, I never miss church because of it. Uh, I don't treat my kids. I just go to my basement after I kiss my wife goodnight and I down a a liter of gin. How can that be destructive? Well, there's going to be physical ramifications with that. I mean, that's that's the big thing. I mean, if you're going to have a right relationship with alcohol, then alcohol isn't going to be degrading your body and bringing about cirrhosis of the liver which obviously is something that we're talking about in a circumstance right. like that. But uh, it's, it's, it's just like oh, anything. Man. And there, there's, there's boundaries and there's right relationships. And as soon as it starts getting out of a right relationship with something, then it's, it's serving a purpose that, that it's not intended to serve. And that's really what we find as, as far as the, the big, uh, the usual suspect, as far as how do you catch an addiction. There's, there's other things going on in your life that a substance abuse can really come in and start filling that void and helping that, or at least seemingly to help it. And that's what I mean. A lot of people, uh, I started to talk about this a little bit ago, but this has really been more of an issue with prescription drug addictions as of late. Mm -hmm. And, you know, somebody can, uh, they'll, they'll sustain an injury and their doctor will put them on some Oxycontin, a pain reliever. And they'll take their Oxycontin throughout a normal course of treatment. They heal, and they stop and go about their business. And then maybe six months later or a year later, they get hurt again. And they've got a few pills left over. Uh, Instead of going to the doctor and dealing with all that, they just start taking their pills again. Well, what really depends or what it really depends on as far as whether or not that's going to introduce an addiction is what else is going on in your life. Maybe six months, a year ago, things were going pretty well. Uh, maybe since then, there's been some difficulties in your marriage. Uh, you've had some other relationships struggling. Mm. You've had some self-esteem mm-hmm. issues. Maybe work isn't going well. There's, there's all kinds of things that can come into play in that time. Now when I take a pill, it's making some of those seem a bit less harmful. Uh, a bit less bad. You feel better mm-hmm. about yourself. And that's really what we get into is what is the perception of your, uh, of your functionality when you're using a substance versus when you're not. And if you uh, okay, let me, let me, let me stop here. So, that's so, we have you, so what you're saying is, is I go through pain. I got some extra Oxycontin in the cabinet. I take it to relieve my pain. Mm-hmm. But what's wrong with that? Nothing. Okay. Okay. Nothing. But, but that's you're, great. But, you're but saying, they'll go back and they'll say, well, why didn't I get addicted the first time? Okay. And well, so, but, but, then, but then where does the addiction come from? The mental and emotional uh, uh, stability in your life. That's really what we're finding. I mean, now, yes, there are some biological ramifications. It is going to alter the, the neurotransmission right, right, right. Uh, in your brain chemicals and your reward structure and all of those things. Okay, so but, what I hear you saying is, is that if I continue down that path, every time I go to grab and I go through pain and I grab something that is outside of myself, you're not saying that? No. Okay. No, I'm saying that you're going to be more susceptible to an addiction 
because of if you start taking a pill and it fixes other things in your life that aren't about the pain, ah. that's when the pill is providing a solution to that that is not a right relationship with that pill. That's not okay. what you're taking it for. Uh, you're taking it for the pain. If you take it for the pain and plus, because I feel more able to deal with my wife when I'm taking the pill, now we have a problem. When I take the pill and plus, I feel better just about myself in general. Now we have a problem. I drink because it makes me feel <laughs> That's stronger. Right. I, yeah. You know, my wife always reminded me because I always said that I drank because I couldn't sleep, which was true. But what does alcohol do? It's a, a, a stimulant. Right? No, it's a depressant. Oh, depressant. Yeah, yeah and, and it, it impacts your sleep, and your sleep cycles are shortened. Oh. Right, Bob? It depends on your physiology, but it, does, it can do that. Yes. Okay. So now I quit drinking almost three years, and I still don't sleep well. <laughs> so Is that because it, of the habit that you got into? Mm, no, I just, I just think I'm kind of white trash and just don't know how to <laughs> sleep well. I don't know why it is. I really don't. I, I, don't I, I have, I don't, and we'll have to talk about, we'll have to have somebody on the show someday about dreams, but I have these unbelievable, realistic dreams with people in them. I mean, people I know, you've probably all been in a dream of mine one or two times. And the same thing is always happening. I'm being abandoned. I feel betrayed. I feel left out. You know, and I'm just, I'm, this is restoring hope. I'm just being transparent right, right, here. Good. And that comes from my borderline. Right. So for some reason in my brain, I'm taking all those people in my life and I'm putting them in the worst scenario. And I think that's the deceiver. I think I'm too much, you know, we talk about, do you have a relationship with the deceiver? I do. And when I sleep is when I'm mostly aware of it. In the daytime, I can filter it out and I'm not such a bad guy. But I think at night when I don't have that conscious conscious filter i think he gets in there and messes with me i'm just a weak old suck which makes you prone to addictive behavior absolutely so that's what you're saying whether absolutely. it's drugs alcohol right sex yep right on down the line that's right eating yep exercise yep oh, grandkids no. i don't have any problem with exercise <laughs> <laughs> no addiction on that at all <laughs> um all right uh, joe Mites is our guest from st gregory's dr michael hartwig bob monster at the cat in that anything on chat Anything coming up on chat? Or have you been no. studying too much into Webster's Dictionary? No, no, no. Nope. Nothing on chat. All right. No. Um, I had a question for Joe. Okay. You were saying on uh, when you go to the doctor for pain, yep. for instance, surgery or whatever it is, they give you a narcotic, synthetic, whatever. Uh, but you're saying that it's – and that's using it for physiological reasons. Right. But you say it could be used for psychological reasons. Well, you know, essentially, it's not something that people will generally set out to do from the onset. But when, when, you're, when you come under the influence of that medication, and sooner or later, you're going to start recognizing that you feel better with it. Now, it, there is a period where it'll, it'll not be so much because of it makes my pain go away. I just feel better in life with mm -hmm. this. And the reason that that's going to happen is primarily because there's difficulties elsewhere in life that it's, that it's helping. And that's, that's really the point here. So, you know, that first go around, you know, things are going well outside of that. I just have a pain that, you know, I'm healing from. And you'll go through that, your course of treatment, you'll heal and move on with your life. But the next time, all of a sudden, there's other issues in life. And that's really what's going to be opening the door and bringing the susceptibility to an addiction a little bit more prevalent. And that's the danger there. So. Is there anything biologically that makes us more pr prone to addictions, or is it just the five inches between our ears? No, there are biological indications. Um, you know, it, it really comes down to your affinity to whatever substance that you're using. And that's going to be different. That's based on your DNA and metabolism, however you metabolize that specific substance. Um, like one person, uh, if I'm in the bar and I'm next to, uh, let's call her Sally. Okay. Uh, call her Susie. I like Sally. Sally's, Sally's too nice of a name. We'll call her Susie. Susie. Uh, Susie can be a you, tramp. Sally's not a you, tramp. You've just offended all the Susies out there. I know, right. but I, I know a special but you, Sally. Can but you repeat the Sally. line of this is... Uh, <laughs> Not representative. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right, right. There you go. <laughs> but we can have two people sitting in the bar. And one person maybe only weighs 150 pounds. And they drink a six-pack of beer, and they're okay. And the person next to them maybe weighs 200 pounds. And they drink a six-pack, and they're drunk. 
Right. That's because of their metabolism. That's how their body processes alcohol differently. Now, that's one issue. The other issue is, is what is the, the neuro affinity to the effects of that? So if you, some people are going to have a greater affinity to, say, Oxycontin, and that person will become chemically dependent faster oh, okay. than the next person. All that really means is, is that their body is now relying on it physically. And if they, if they okay. abruptly stop taking it, there's going to be signs of withdrawal. They'll have, you know, uh, nausea, things like that. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have a psychosocial addiction. That just means that your body is going to have some trouble. It needs to be weaned off slowly. And that's so, destructive. That is destructive. Which that's, falls into our definition of that's addiction. That's right. Okay. That's right. But the issues are a little bit different there. So, you know, it really comes down to, you know, first of all, how does your body react? Are you going to have a higher affinity to that substance? And that's on the physical level. Now, the psychosocial level, which is at least equally important, I always consider that it's much more important, is how much is this helping you in areas where it shouldn't be helping you? And that's the big issue for me. But yes, there are uh, physical ramifications to addiction and physical leaders into addiction. All right, Joe Mites is in the house from St. Gregory's. By the way, if you um, are thinking that someone you love might be your son, your daughter, might be a sibling, might be somebody you work with, heaven forbid, maybe it's you, that you suffer from an addiction, that you're caught up, you can't quit, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, call St. Gregory's. Get online, look them up, you can find them. There are counselors standing by 24-7 to talk to you. And maybe you'll find that the retreat that you need in your life is a Christ-centered retreat inside of one of St. Gregory's retreat centers. I don't know. Just check it out. Ask the questions for yourself. Dr. Michael Hartwig in the house. Also, Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat, King David producing, and I'm Mac. And I thank you for listening. To webcastonelive.com, this is Restoring Hope Live. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. I'm Rob Spearman. I'm a broker owner of Remax Real Estate Concepts in Des Moines, Iowa. Give us a call if you're looking at buying or selling a home, or if you're having trouble on your mortgage payments or looking to purchase foreclosures, we have the agents to help you, experienced, outstanding agents. Our office number is 515-276-2872. Or if you'd like to look at homes, go to our website, homeconnectusa.com. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. 
from the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. Twenty-two minutes before the top on this network, you'll hear the Salem Radio Network news, and then Michael Mudloff and True Blue, a pastor at West Kirk Presbyterian Church here in town. I'm Jay Michael McCoy. Thanks again to Matt Baird, who who wrote and sang our theme song, "Restoring Hope." For those of you that don't know, Matt, uh, great guy, wonderful man of Jesus, uh, has a band called Spoken. Uh, probably touring in your area at some point, or you can check him out online. All right, Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat watching the chat. Dr. Michael Hartwig in the house for Restoring Hope. And, of course, Joe Mines from St. Gregory. So we've caught an addiction. Now, how do we get rid of it? Well, now here's the thing. Now, since we're going to have this understanding that addiction comes from more than just the substance, there's other things at play here. Right. And there's physical issues as well. Uh, how is it affecting your body? How hard is your body physically going to hold on to this dependency? Okay. What St. Gregory's does is that's where we start. I want, I want to ask a question. Yep. Does the body always want to hold on and the brain won't let it? Or is it that doesn't matter? Well, uh, it really comes down to your your body, brain included, is used to having this substance ingested. Okay. And that's really what it's reliant on. Um, yes, it is a, a neurochemical issue for the most part. I mean, that's, that's really where the cravings, that's where the dependency is going to come from with a physical dependency. But the issue is, is throughout a prolonged use, that system is going to incur damage. And it's going to start changing how it normally functions. And that's really where it starts. We're not going to ask somebody to really confront the entirety of their life until they're physically better prepared and more able to do that. Um, you know, there's, I think you could talk to anyone that's really had to go through an intensive learning period. Um, they would probably assume not do that with the flu. And that's really kind of the same thing here with addiction. So the first part of our programming is really to address, you know, let's take a look at you physically. Let's really bolster that and, and really boost your ability to feel better faster and help your body uh, engage in those repairing activities. So what you're you saying is, is you're trying to get, get the body healthy. That's right. Then you try to get the mind healthy. Is that's that right. what you're saying? Okay. That's right. So before, Try to get to the root cause of what is the issue. Yep. And, you know, we're, the, the term we always use is we want to make sure that you're well enough for recovery. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we really want well to Well enough sure, for recovery? That's right. You know, well, we want you feeling good physically before we have to go and tackle all the mental and oh, emotional okay, issues. Okay, all right. So we're going to work on repairing the body. We do that through uh, IV therapies, which... Uh, introduces amino acids, which are really the building blocks for uh, the the neurotransmitters that your body's going to need to rely on. Your okay, so what, it, what I hear you saying too is is that in chronic situations, people that are totally addicted, they they physically, not just mentally, mm -hmm. physically, they need kind of a shock to their system to clean it everything out before they can address it. If you, and my understanding too is is if you don't, um, if you don't get to the root causes, they're going to fall back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, if you don't if you don't deal with what drove the addiction in right. the first place, right. then you know what are you recovering from? Right. You you may not be using methamphetamine anymore, but right. you're going to find something else to cope until you have a healthy process for coping with those things. Right. So once somebody's well enough to recover, that's when we really use. It's a very systematic approach. In fact, it's curriculum driven. So it's the process that we use with each and every client that's really shown the biggest results for us. Now, that, that process is individualized based on your responses at each stage through it, but it's really it makes sure that we're going to make, really dig into each of the most important dynamics right. that need to be addressed 
relationships, spiritual, all of those things need to, to really be paid attention to. Because you really don't always know what the trigger point is. No, do you? you certainly yeah. don't. And most of the time, you know, an individual's not usually going to know exactly what that trigger point was. So it's, we have to cover right. all of our bases. And, you know, right. we, don't, we don't really rely on, you know, a lot of individualized therapy and, and psychiatrists. And, and that's why, because we want to make sure that the treatment that you're getting and the care you're getting isn't going to sometimes be altered based on how that guy feels that day or how you mean well which you get guy along the, with the therapist. You mean the doc? Oh, the therapist. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, and we certainly don't want to create an atmosphere. The crazy of one in the room. <laughs> <laughs> the therapist. <laughs> so, Joe, are you saying, let me get this clear for me, too, that you use nutritional support to build their body up yes. because they're lacking certain nutrition yeah. for, to function properly. Right. And if you're on, hooked on some narcotic or whatever the drug is, it's actually substituting for that. Right. And That's so, exactly right. so if you take that drug away, mm -hmm. then you have to give it to nutrition so the body can build itself back up. That's right. You need yeah. to, you know, at least supply the body with what it needs to rise to meet the challenge once you take what it has been relying on away. Yeah, so and I, I, oh, okay. that's what I love about St. Gregory's. I mean, if you go into right. a, a, a treatment center, you're going to get bananas and apple juice. Mm -hmm. And I'm not making a joke. That's about your meal, right? A lot of times, yeah. L not a lot of carbs, not a lot of, you know, they're going to give you bananas for potassium because you need to get your potassium up, and they're going to give you fruit juice for the acids. But I, what I love about St. Gregory's is they've got a whole vision into the nutrition that, quite frankly, I, I, I can't find anywhere else. It doesn't exist in the 12-step world. No, no, you're not going to find it very often. In fact, they're all uh, proprietary protocols that we use that have been developed with input from all over the country. So yeah. this model is really good because I think a lot of times we, we forget, especially those of us who kind of counsel people and, and work with people, we forget the importance of the physical side to make mm -hmm. good decisions. And it was brought to light in me. I watched a movie called The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Anybody Yikes. see that? Yeah, it's a scary movie. But in it, there's a, a point where this girl was so drugged up and the guy, Catholic, wanted to exorcise the demon out of her. But he made the case he couldn't because she was so doped up on drugs. Yeah, which is an interesting thing in the real world, because you can't make good decisions unless you think clearly. You know, that's a really important part for our program as well. Most of the people that come right. into us are on, you know, or, you know, antidepressants or some right, other right. mood altering right, substance. Right, right. And a big piece of our program is we're going to to taper someone off of those to get down to a baseline so we can really see how are they functioning. You know, how are they feeling about these things that they're touching on. Uh, we can't do that if they're medicated. Uh, you know, if you're on an antidepressant, you may intellectually be aware of a problem, but you're not going to feel the ramifications yeah, of the problem. And that's a right. big problem right. for us because we want to know right. that when you go home, right. how you feel about something is going to dictate how you react from it. Okay, so mom and dad send their little girl who's 25 and a spoiled rotten brat uh, into St. Gregory's, and she's got, and mom and dad say, listen, she has to have her 60 milligrams of Cymbalta every day. Mm -hmm. You guys say no. Right. Wow. Right. Uh, we're so gonna, that's what I like about these guys. Yeah, but that's also scary. In that case of Emily Rose, which was a live case, they mm -hmm. made a movie off of it, but mm -hmm. the priest ended up going to prison because he a, the same scenario... The priest convinced the family to take her off the drugs, and eventually she killed herself. Well, the different scenario is we don't do it in a barn. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> We're right. in a controlled right, environment right, right, with right. our position. Yeah, that's a good, good thing. <laughs> yeah. now, right. I mean, but you understand yeah. how vulnerable you yes. are if something goes bad. Yeah, I, you know, I, I know it's true that when people are, for instance, changing uh, medications that they're on for, you know, antidepressants mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, when they're coming off and getting ready to go on is the most dangerous time mm -hmm. when suicide is, yeah, is right. very likely. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is, in your case, you don't allow them to be unobserved during that time. Right. You know, they're, they're in our medical units. They're in our retreat centers. Uh, it's under the care of our psychiatrists. It's under the care of our counselors. Uh, you know, they're not... Right. off being levitated on a bed or anything like that. <laughs> what about... Uh, the movie, yeah. what but about, that's the interesting thing. Yeah. What we usually find is most of the people that have been diagnosed with depression or anxiety and all those things were diagnosed while they were using. And I don't mm, know yeah, of a good psychiatrist correct. or that's medical great. doctor that will say that you can diagnose a mood disorder while someone is abusing a, a substance. It cannot be done. Yeah. What right. about like bipolar? Same thing. We Same thing. So you'd pull them off bipolar meds? Absolutely. And, you know, we find... Bipolar is one of the more overly diagnosed conditions that we see. Yeah.
Wow, good stuff. Yeah, really good stuff. Joe Mines in the house from St. Gregory's. Again, it's St. Gregory, St. Gregory's Retreat Center dot org. Wow, it's St. Gregory CTR dot com. I was just a few <laughs> letters off. Just a few letters off. <laughs> Joe Meitzen, uh, Dr. Michael Hartwig, Bob Monster at the Cat and Hat Watch in the chat being produced today by King David. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and if I haven't told you lately, thanks for listening. Love this ministry. Couldn't do it without you. Right here on webcast1live.com and 99.3 KTIA, Iowa. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached. And you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Ten before the top, and on this network, the Salem Radio Network News, and then Michael Mudloff and True Blue from West Kirk Presbyterian Church. Uh, got a big week uh, this week for you local Wednesday. Brad Zahn is in the house, and we're going to talk about some of the legislative issues. They're past the funnel now, so we're, we're not playing anybody's play box anymore. It's coming down to real-life things. Uh, and, of course, uh, one of the things I hope he talks about is this smoke and mirrors stuff that the administration pulled called what was it called that we were going to reach that cliff and what's the word sequester oh they've shut the tours down at the white house oh my our government's in trouble anyway uh that's coming up wednesday with <laughs> tom Coates and brad's on I'm sorry. I just do that again. That's <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's um, nice. And you know why they shut down the tours, don't you? Yeah, con- make make everybody feel bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, they, 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 they still it. give billion dollars over to yeah. Egypt. And yeah. I've heard Michelle Obama's a streaker, so that's probably a. <laughs> <to do. laughs> What was that line? This is those these, are the uh, pi- those are not the opinions of Joe Mike and Saint Gregory. Yeah, you got to get that out there. How do you catch an addiction? We talked about that. We 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 define distru- uh, addictions with destructive behavior, slavery. You're a slave to it, obsessed to it. Uh, the, any anything can become an addiction. Anything done in moderation is not a bad thing. But when you break that moderation to, it controls me. I plan my day around it. You talk to a lot of alcoholics, functioning alcoholics, alcoholics that go to work every day, lawyers, doctors, administrators, CPAs. 
whatever they are. They go to work in the morning. Maybe they had a little pump. Maybe they didn't. Maybe at noon they have a little pump. Maybe they didn't. But at night, their whole day is planned around my drinking. And by golly, if it's Friday, I better have enough booze in my house in case that Ed Wilson is right for once and we have this terrible winter storm sock us into the house. That's called addiction. Now, how do we get rid of it? We've heard from Joe Mainz that the first thing you have to do, and this is the thing I love about St. Gregory's, is you have to get yourself physically ready to kick this habit. Yep. Meaning healthy. Right. Right. We need to start repairing some of the damage that that substance has done to you physically. Once that happens and we've got you on a baseline where, you know, you're not medicated, you're not, you know, just kind of zoned out on a medication. Now we can start really digging into your life. And the way we do this is much different. This isn't a place to come and just cry about your life all day and be sad and, you know, think, oh, my gosh, this is horrible. This is a much more empowering approach. We're very much a, a tools driven. And we're a Christ centered. Uh, that's right. You know, and, and, and realistically, the biggest issue with that is that formulates how we're going about the treatment process. We're not going to inter, interject something in our treatment programming that we don't see as in line with a biblical standard. And you know, that means to us, uh, you know, when people come to us and say, I was born with this disease of addiction, we don't think that that's true. Um, we don't think God created you to have an addiction. We think God may have created you in a certain way, and that's in line with the gifts that you've been given that are gonna be in line with a purpose for you, but uh, an addiction for us is something that's standing between you and God, not something that God gave you. And that's, that's a big issue for us, and that's a real driver on why we take that position. Okay, now I just, I'm, I just want to interrupt. Uh, uh, you're amazing at what you do. Uh, a lot of people don't know you're an interventionist. You know how to really help people. Don't you think in any way it was part of God's plan that he would allow you to experience this desperation of addiction so you could then be the person, the next person he wanted you to be, the fulfillment of the person he created you to be, so you could help the hundreds and thousands you've helped? No. Okay. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Great answer, man. You know, I mean, Is that the correct uh, answer biblically? I he do, yeah. I mean, will. you don't you don't have to have cancer to be a cancer doctor. I mean, I I, I never had cancer, so I, that disqualifies me from helping people. That's just okay. That's foolish. All right. It does give them a unique perspective, though. And I think if uh, if you're a recovering alcoholic, you can speak uniquely to people, but that doesn't disqualify someone from it. I mean, that's just right. He silly. can use that for right. good, right. and I feel he's done that with right. me. Exactly. And, and we talked a little bit about last week. You know, that was something that I personally struggled with for a couple of years. Was you know, was this by design that I went through what I did? Because you know, I, I didn't go to prison, which I should, right. I certainly could have. Uh, you know, I didn't die, which I should have. Uh, I didn't kill anybody else, which I certainly could have. Um, you know, so for a while there, I had this misconception that, well, maybe I was supposed to do this. And I don't think that that's true. Um, you know, I think that once I, I was able to see some light and, and really pull myself out of some of this stuff, then he was able to help me uh, at least with the gifts that he's put in my heart to, to go out and, and preach his word. But I don't think that it was driven for me to go down that path. See, I... I, I I want to get back to this whole philosophy of how St. Gregory looks at um, what the core issue. If I understand this correctly, you clean somebody up, you get them physically healthy, physically healthy, maybe not mentally. But um, And you mentioned Jesus Christ. You take a biblical perspective. But if I don't have an organizing principle in my life, mm -hmm. or it's myself, mm -hmm. as a Christian organization, how do you handle that coming in? Do you, do you say... Hey, you got to well, you answer that. Yeah, see, I mean, see and, you, answer. you know, and to, and to be a Christian organization, we don't, we don't necessarily have to be cramming theology down people's throats or anything like that. Uh, what our program really does is help to illuminate the gifts that, that each individual is coming in with. And what we've really found is, is once we can illuminate those gifts, and, and our program is also very much predicated around being others-centered, uh, that's a very important part of our program. There's a lot of community service. Uh, when you come into us, everybody's getting out in the community and, and working with people and helping those. But if you don't have need. What Christ, we find is yeah. when you start illuminating the gifts and it's not about you, it starts to shine light on the giver. And one of the things that we, you know, it's, it's always a, a surprising thing. Uh, when you come into a treatment atmosphere, even people that were brought up, uh, very religious 
will often reject uh, Christian theology and treatment just because for the very nature that addiction really has you second-guessing a lot of things about yourself. And frankly, a lot of people are, are mad at God. Right. Uh, it's, a, it's a misplaced anger, but nonetheless, they're mad at God. Right. And if we come in there and start saying, well, you just need to repent, you need to repent, right, then, right, you know, right. they're going to run for the door. Um, so by helping them to understand just exactly what they've been given and prepared for, now all of a sudden we have a much broader opening in that door. And, and it's, it's been amazing to watch some of those transformations. So but if the heart, though, doesn't change, that's what I'm looking at, is if the heart doesn't change. And what I mean by that is that their whole philosophy about life and what God has given them is in Jesus Christ, it, it wouldn't necessarily change, make any lifelong changes. It won't change unless you start to challenge the irrational understandings that you've right. held. And being that is our program, is sure. challenge, challenging sure. those irrationalities, we're getting right. more to a virtuous core. Uh, right. And that's that's really where he's able to come right. through and walk through that door. And that's, right. that's a, a really cool thing. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. Joe Mites, St. Gregory's, Dr. Michael Hartwig, uh, Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat, and I'm J. Michael McCoy for King David Producing and Deacon Dennis. Thanks for being with us today. We'll see you tomorrow. Between now and then, do me one favor. Pray. <laughs>